in this practicum project we're going to create a reference application on message boxes showing the various ways that can be configured and this will give us some hands-on practice encoding the message box with its various arguments at the top we have a picture box I will provide you five images to, to display information about the syntax of the show method some ex an example what the various buttons are that we can use such as OK Cancel or Cancel Try or Ignore, Yes No. The various icons we have available to us, there are four different ones. And then finally, how do we configure which is the default button? Then we have eight buttons that will show examples. The first one is showing just the prompt, then a title with the prompt, a title prompt and changing the buttons from the default OK to Yes, No in this case, or in this one, Yes, No, Cancel. Later we'll look at how to use conditional structures and we determine which button the user clicked and do different things based on the button they clicked. This one uses abort, we try ignore for the buttons, but also adds an icon here. This is the warning icon or exclamation icon. Here we have the prompt, OK Cancel for our buttons, and then also uh, an icon. The prompt can consist of multiple lines, so we can hard code in carriage return line feeds in our prompt. But also notice that the default button here is the Cancel button, button 2, normally be OK. So we specified changing that to button 2. And then this one, we made the third button the default. I would suggest pausing the video here and trying this on your own. If you struggle or just want to compare your version to mine, what follows in this video will be the code review of my solution for this project. For the interface, I start with the form of 800 by 600 in size, give it a text of message box reference, create a label at the top for just information of what this project does, and then I create a picture box. My picture box, I named pick reference, so PIC reference. Its size is 710 by 250. Set the size mode to normal for the images. I imported the syntax, the example, the buttons, the icons, and the default. and then set it to the syntax. I create a label just for the word reference and then five buttons. These are named BTN1 syntax, BTN2 example, BTN3 buttons, BTN4 icons, and BTN5 default. And I set, set the back color of the first one, the syntax button, to yellow. We're gonna change the colors of these to whichever one is selected showing the picture. So there's a reference, a visual reference to the image and the button that was selected. And I've got a label for examples and simply eight buttons. BTN message box one, BTN message box two, message box three, and so forth. Last one here is BTN message box eight. And then the text of each of these is set to what we want to display as far as the message box. Well, let's go in and look at our code. I double clicked each of the reference buttons to create a click event handler for those, each of the buttons. And in each one of those, I'm basically doing the same thing. We're going to set pick reference.image to my.resources. In this case, for the syntax button, it's going to be message box 01 syntax. Those are the images that we brought in to our picture box and are listed in the resource folder of our Solution Explorer. Then I'm going to set the back color of the button to yellow and set the back color of the other four to systemcolors.control. In my case, that control is medium gray, but that control color will be based on the user's color scheme that they've set up in their Windows settings. The example buttons can be the same thing, except here we're setting the, the image to myresources.messagebox02 example, and we're setting the BTN2 example to back color to yellow and the others to the control color. Button three, setting the pick reference image to message box 03 buttons, setting that button's back color to yellow, and the other four to control. Here are the fourth and fifth buttons for a reference. 
doing the exact same thing, just changing the image and changing the back colors. Now for our message boxes, the first one is just a very simple one with a prompt and a title. This says, hello class, welcome. So we're using messagebox.show, our prompt as a literal string, comma, our title as a literal string. So BTN message box two, click event, also using message box show. Our prompt is literal string of this is the prompt, comma, and then our title goes here as our second literal string. BTN message box three, it's click event. Our prompt is, are you new here? Title, welcome programmer. And then we're sending the message box buttons to dot yes, no. It's gonna give us yes and no buttons. The yes will be the default since it's the first one. Message box four, we have a turn left here as our prompt, confirm direction as our title, message box buttons, and here we're using yes, no, cancel. B10 message box five. And I did this one a little bit differently. I set a string variable named prompt and gave it a value of that attempt failed and set a, another string variable named title and assigned problem encountered. And then I can use prompt and title rather than the literal strings in my message box show. The advantage of this is that line is not as long, it's a little more readable, and we may want to build prompt and title from other values. And it's often easier to do that as a variable. And then message box buttons, and here we're using dot abort retry ignore. And then we're adding an icon, message box icon dot exclamation. For our sixth message box, BTN message box six click event, we're gonna again set variables for our prompt and title, a little bit off target and mission status, using those in message box show. And here we do message box buttons, okay, cancel, and message box icon dot error. And that error icon will also produce an audio beep. Our seventh message box, BTN message box seven, click event, setting the prompt. And here I want to show you, you can do multiple lines in the prompt. One advantage of using a variable here makes this a little bit easier. So I have a literal string of this class is, and then I use an ampersand, this is called a concatenation operator, and I'm adding to that string the visual basic carriage return line feed. That's a new line. And then I'm adding to that again with this ampersand, the literal string of CS150AB Object Oriented Programming Fundamentals, adding to that another carriage return line feed, and then adding to that the literal string taught by Professor Hustady. I'm going to set the title also as a variable to what course is this. Use those in the message box dot show method, so prompt title. Here we're going to set the message box buttons to OK Cancel. We're going to set the icon to None. Now because I'm going to have a fifth argument here for the message box default button dot button two that's going to make the second button the cancel button the default if these are press the enter key that'll be the button they click in order to do that and use that fifth one i have to have a fourth one and so that's why we have a message box icon dot none there has to be something here and then our last one we're going to set the prompt to a string is the project launch a go? Notice I use single quotes around go, which is okay inside the double quotes. Message box dot show, setting the prompt. Now for the title on this one, again, I have to have something here because I'm gonna have a third and fourth and fifth argument. So I need a second argument. I just set it to a null string, quote, quote. Basically sets it to nothing or to blank. Message box buttons dot yes, no cancel. So three buttons. Message box icon here is going to be question. And then continue on the next line, message box default button equals button three. That'll make the cancel button the default button that if the user does nothing else, they can just press the enter key and the same as clicking on cancel. That's my code review for the message box reference project. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the programming practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.